So I'd like to welcome Mauro Di Fabritis, a partner at uh, MAG Consultants. They're a strategic and operational consultants uh, working with both regulators and operators. And um, Mauro is going to talk about online strategy. Over to you. Hey, so, uh, buenas tardes a todos, por lo menos un saludo español, and, uh, and then I will turn into English. And uh, thanks to um, Gaming in Spain and uh, to the organization, to William Van Ort, to the, for the opportunity to, uh, to speak. In this uh, peculiar uh, moment, next to the um, new uh, license application in uh, in Spain. So, what I I want to discuss, uh, what to present uh, to you today, is uh, just an overall analysis on uh, how the Spanish market is uh, right now, and which are uh, on the one hand the threats, and on the other uh, the opportunities to compete in uh, in this market. So. I start a little bit far away, so from the general, and sorry to overlap with some data with my previous, uh, the previous speaker, but it's just uh, to focus on the main uh, figures. It's clear that the, the online uh, trend uh, is growing, and the percentage of online, and not only in the gambling market, uh, uh, within the, the gambling as a whole is increasing, and it's around in, uh, at the global level, uh, with the projections of 12, around 12% 12 on the total market, that is around 450 uh, billion uh, as a whole. Uh, let's do the segmentation of the, of the products uh, on a worldwide level of uh, online gambling, and we see that the trend is that products like uh, casino and uh, betting are growing more and more in the, in the last year with a with forecast that it's around 80% uh, of uh, incidents according to our estimations uh, on the, the total basket, on the, on the total offer. So, uh, if we go uh, have a look to the, some relevant markets in, uh, in Europe, uh, it's just uh, a quick comparison to see at a glance what is happening regarding gaming online, we see that Spain has uh, a particular positive trend. The, the CAG we have measured it's around 22% due to the, the growing of the different products from year to year and to the different steps of regulation that nowadays uh, allows to, to Spain to be one of the most uh, complex market in terms of offer allowed. Let's go inside uh, of, the, of the Spanish market and the le let's look at the mix of, uh, of product. Uh, as you see, coherently with what is happening on a, on a global level, even in Spain, casino uh, products, so the sum of casino and slot plus betting, are dominating uh, the market. Uh, we have done some estimation. The estimation is an estimation, so uh, <laughs> we do not pretend to, uh, that the number will exactly that, but our esti estimation that is the close of the uh, 2018, the closing will overcome 700 million euros of uh, GGR, and the trend will continue and uh, will overcome 900 million euros of GGR in uh, 2019. Let's, let's have a look to the uh, competitive positioning of operators in uh, uh, Spain, segment by segment. So, sport betting, a market really uh, dominated by big leaders. So you see this part, sorry. You see this part um, of the graphic where you have uh, the biggest operator of the Spanish market um, we are comparing the market share with the, um, the revenues, uh, the GGR growth, and the, the, the market, the first, uh, the top four or five operators are dominating the 75% uh, of the sport betting market that is growing on a, on, in, in Spain and uh, uh, at a global uh, 
level, also due to the incidents, the big incidents of live betting and the heavy use of mobile. Different situation in casino, where the market is much more fragmented, where uh, the top five operator will manage around the 50% uh, of the market, and where you have different uh, kinds of positioning. So operators coming from uh, bingo and uh, cross-selling and, and merging their, uh, let, let's say, um, their GGR from, uh, from bingo, sorry, to, uh, to specific slots and to casino, and other that are multi-products and uh, giant of the sectors that have specialized their line in casino uh, product that is growing more and more, uh, especially to uh, the growing of slots in specific case and the uh, big, the great incidents of uh, live casino. <coughs> regarding, regarding poker, I have few words to spend. Uh, there is a big dominant player uh, that is poker stars. Um, new players like Winamax joined the market uh, due to the modification in terms of uh, liquidity. Liquidity, in, uh, the international liquidity in some way is inverting the, the, the trend that uh, anyway uh, seems to be uh, not increasing like other, other products. So the poker is in, uh, in the overall industry a residual uh, product in terms of potential uh, trends. Now, <laughs> let's, have, let's have a look to uh, which are the main threats for incumbent operators in, uh, in Spain and also newcomers. It seems to be a market that is growing. Uh, it seems to be a market really competitive, as we have seen, the main brands uh, on the, um, in the international scenario are um, present in, uh, in Spain. And uh, <laughs> the real question is, we have uh, already more than 40 operators uh, uh, working and competing in the, in the Spanish market. And what about what will happen for the, the newcomers? The hypothesis is that the newcomers should be around 15 or uh, 20 brands in, uh, in new brands in the market. And which, was, uh, which will be the, the scenario? Uh, will these new operators compete and, and uh, let's say, store <laughs> market shares to the incumbent? Or they will fuel a new adi an additional market, which, is, uh, which will be the way uh, for them to, to compete, for, for, for most of you that are uh, joining this, uh, this conference. <coughs> Just a, an analysis, uh, really a, an exercise, a mathematical exercise to, based on specific data coming from uh, the GOJ. I move a little bit to... <coughs> As you see, we, we have taken the, sorry, we have taken the last data of 2007 of 560 millions of uh, GGR and included the um, values in terms of bonus and ab advertising in the different years from 2013 to 2017 uh, coming from the, the GOJ data. <coughs> The result of this analysis is that what we can call the, the margin, a really gross uh, margin, is as a, in, the, in the global, as a, as a whole, the, 30%, the 33% on the, on the GGR. What happens? That in order for uh, uh, each of the operators to calculate their, their own profit and loss, you have to rest from that margin all the costs, the variable cost, the cost of platform, the cost for payment providers, the cost for other providers, the personal costs, and so on. What happened? That the, some of the operator will lose money, and this is the, the bad thing, 
and someone uh, will make money, but the margin is not so big. So, uh, what does it mean entering in the Spanish uh, market? It means to be prepared as an operator to invest money um, and to risk something, but above all, to define, to well define the good strategy in order to, let's say, uh, keep and control the risks. What happens in terms of threats in, uh, in the political uh, situation in, uh, in Spain? There is, in, in, this, um, in this period, the, the, the political momentum is really peculiar <coughs> as uh, different political parties are trying to join to, to be able to, uh, to manage the country, but with uh, several difficulties and with many contradictions. And uh, going from the general scenario to something that is closer to, to the gambling, I'm really, I'm really worried about <laughs> this conversation. <laughs> uh, the, the problem is, what uh, are we going to do regarding advertising? Uh, this morning, um, the, in, in the first uh, panel, co coordinated by Santiago, uh, this was the, the topic on, on which we have tried together to find, uh, let's say, to make a forecast. But the problem is that a forecast is, is possible on numbers, but it's more difficult or impossible, I should say, with politics. Because the, the problem is that we will not lose time to explain why the ban in advertising is a, a bad measure, or why it's completely ineffective, or why it is absurd, because uh, everyone knows, but the problem is that good arguments, rational arguments for the politics are not, not enough to change uh, things. So there is a question mark. Some of us, and I, I personally hope that uh, Spain will not follow the Italian example, but the sensibility on this matter, not only in Spain, but worldwide, is really high. And uh, the advertising is only a part of a more general topic that is the responsible gambling and the customer protection. <coughs> so, just an example. What happened, or what is going to happen, because it's, uh, we are just starting in Italy. In Italy, there is a general uh, law that states simply that advertising is not allowed. And for other advertising, uh, in, in, uh, in the decree, in the law, <coughs> sorry, uh, they define everything that is direct or everything that's, that is indirect advertising and also sponsorships or, or things like, like that. So if we, just a, as a second exercise, if we split the way uh, an operator could uh, manage the, the marketing investment in the different uh, area, uh, we see that in the majority of the areas, according to the Italian decree, theoretically speaking, the advertising is blocked. But uh, what does it mean making advertising on gambling? Is advertising to promote specific uh, odds or speak about sport? Or is advertising also only uh, to show the brand and, and to promote bonus in order to attract the customer to, to the web page. So there are areas of uh, uncertainty <coughs> where the, the, the general rules defined in the law are not so specific um, to allow operators to define what they can do and uh, uh, what they can't do. And so uh, this is just an example to, to say, to figure out what could happen, theoretically speaking, in Spain, in case they should follow the Italian example. But in Spain, uh, uh, at a political level, someone says, 
in, uh, in the Podemos side, we will, uh, we will ban, but we will not ban totally. We will follow the alcohol <coughs> and the tobacco, but alcohol and tobacco are two different industries and two different ways to be managed. So it's a little bit confusing what is going to happen. <coughs> let's take this problem aside for, uh, for one moment, and let's think about the opportunities that on the other side uh, we have in the Spanish market. First of all, the Spanish, the Spanish market as a, as a whole, speaking of the online segment, is growing. It's growing from the 20, uh, 2012 to 2017, reaching 10% of the total market. Uh, one point, 10% is calculated uh, on the total market excluding lotteries. So <coughs> if, we, if we should include the total lotteries uh, in the total, we are speaking of an incident of less than 6%, quite 6%, a little bit less. So the message here is that there is room for the Spanish market to grow in, uh, in the online, especially considering that if we calculate the GGR per person uh, through in the comparison of the, of the states you say in the, in the slide, you see that Spain it is at the same level of Portugal with completely different data, with a different uh, population, with a, a different GDP. So the, the, the message is there is most likely room for the country uh, to grow. Let's think uh, uh, as an example to Italy. Italy reached in uh, 2016 uh, 800, uh, around 800, uh, 2015 millions GGR and now we are forecasting in Italy around 1.8 uh, billions. So what, uh, what, a, what a big difference. And, and Spain started from a really uh, low volume in terms of GGR and uh, is growing and, go and growing every year. <coughs> Another point, the market is still not saturated if we compare the uh, specific regulation of these five uh, countries. So most likely uh, 41 operators in the market, more than 15, around 15, who knows, newcomers entering in the market and look at other uh, states like Italy or UK in terms of uh, um, operators working right now. Other point in terms of opportunities, the, let's say the Spanish regulatory framework, if we should vote uh, as a whole, which is the, the situation in Spain in terms of product conditions, economics and uh, compliance, the situation is quite positive. And uh, we should also recognize that the, the DGOJ has made a great work in terms of opening the offer and uh, be flexible and, uh, and really close uh, to the market in order to understand the operator need needs and in order to create within the limits, because uh, uh, there are specific limits also for the regulator, uh, to be really flexible and to create the condition for a sustainable model as uh, Juan Espinosa was commenting this morning. Other point, uh, it's not the present, but as a, as a forecast in, for the future, there are opportunities in the Spanish market to create what we call the, the convergence in, uh, in gambling, starting from the new uh, trends in, in technology and the possibility through technology to apply the same uh, user experience to online and land-based uh, channel, this allows the um, operator to be closer, even in the retail, to the new consumption model of the customer, to propose a new model, a new value proposition, and to create a convergence <coughs> offer. So 
to, to bet uh, online and uh, in, in the shop through the same uh, experience or move money from the, from the online to the, to the shop or register for the, from the shop to the online and have the same technological tools in the two environments with the possibility to be more attractive for the customer and also efficient in terms of internal man management. Sorry. So <coughs> let's have a look to some, uh, to some of the data in terms of uh, online and, uh, and uh, retail uh, with the example of sport betting in three different markets, Italy, Spain, and UK. And we see, just as a, a demonstration, that there is no cannibalization between the, the two channels, as in the different years, online is growing and the, 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 the incidence of online is growing, but the, the retail is growing in the same way. <coughs> the example of convergence comes also from other uh, sectors, and uh, why not gambling? So Amazon uh, created, for example, the Amazon Go experience, where you can avoid the queue and uh, experience the, the, physical ex uh, the, the physical shopping. Uh, and have everything in, in your uh, virtual wallet or click and collect that uh, mix the same, the mix different things. You can choose on uh, online and retire in, in the shop. So uh, maximizing uh, the, the, the physical experience starting from the shop. And there are operators like Warby Parker or, uh, or Bonobos that have moved from the online, online pure model to, uh, to the land base. So the two words are uh, in some way in integrating one into each other due and, and thanks to the technology. This, uh, this model of, of convergence in a, in a word, uh, in few words, helps the ecosystem because it gives advantage to the regulation, gives, give, gives advan advantage to uh, the operators uh, and to the customer. So, uh, I think my, my time is, uh, uh, has gone to an end. Just, uh, just as a conclusion, which is the balance for the, for the Spanish market? There are different threats, but in, uh, in the balance, uh, the pros are, uh, are more than, than the cons. So, the market is growing. The market is still not saturated. Uh, the, 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 the requirements um, defined by the regulation technical, financial, and, and everything are reasonable, and there are in the future converg convergence opportunities. This, uh, is this the guarantee of success for operator? Still not. Uh, it's important to have a really clear and defined strategy and position in the market, uh, and uh, as, as you can teach me, the execution is even more important. Thank you so much for uh, your patience, and uh, if you have a question, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mauro. Um, any questions from the audience on that session? Um, I have a question, if anyone else wants to get in before me. Um, on the slide where you were showing online versus retail, and then there was a, a, a figure in relation to live betting and in-play, 60% in Spain within the online segment, that's 20 percentage points lower than the UK, for example. Why do you, why do you think there's that? disparity there it's and what's what's you know is, is the trajectory going to go the same way as the UK what's, what's your thought? it's uh, you you should also consider the physiological situation in uh, in Spain because the sport betting market in Spain uh, starts quite recently so the, the 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 shop networks is is pretty young compared to other mature market for example UK and for example course, Italy yeah. and so uh, maybe the trend of the two will be higher and higher because the, 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 the physical network is, is still not complete, according to, uh, to my opinion, and the online uh, will grow, will grow in, any, in any case. But one of the things that drove online in the UK is the amount of adverts during the, the sporting events, you know, advertising in play odds at half time and so on, which is going to possibly be not quite so available as a, as a marketing strategy for operators in the UK, but also Spain. So it'd be interesting to see whether that trajectory to, towards 80% does, does occur. 
Yes, and it's also the also as we we saw in in the in the first introduction, uh, the reason why this uh, the trend of this product uh, is uh, is really growing and growing uh, every year is also for the peculiarities of the the, the product, the possibility to customize the product uh, to the impact of the mobile that makes the experience uh, easy and uh, and the attractive and uh, of the big inf incidents, uh, as you say, in, in some way of the live of the live betting that it's really exciting from a, from a customer perspective. But in the end, uh, politicians in some countries are comparing uh, physical slot ma machine mm -hmm. with with live betting. So uh, everything is is part of the same. Uh, yeah. Of, of the same concept, of the same pool. Yeah. Questions? Oh, good. Yeah. Because you were mentioning about the live comparison, live betting comparison with the UK and Spain. Yeah. I think the main challenge in Spain for the live is that to bet live, you have to have the money in your account before the event started. So actually, you cannot go crazy live if you didn't have the money in the account before. So that limits a lot of the time the action uh, from the Spanish. Perspective. I, I, I agree. I agree on, on this point, but there also uh, there also one consideration that uh, the rule on, on, on the customer perspective, the rule that you cannot put the money in uh, your your wallet during the betting uh, event was a surprise at the beginning, but now is uh, is known. So. One walk around on, on that is not completely effective, but one uh, walk around on the customer side is to, to put much, much money <laughs> before in order to, to, to avoid, let's say, the, the regulation uh, block. Hi, Mauro. Um, Will Westcott from Bet Genius. The, I guess the title is The Need to Be Different, and in one of your slides you showed uh, Carstage, the exchange that came into the market and essentially just dropped out, right? Do you think there's room for someone to come in and do something that's very new and needs an educational process for the customers? And do you think there's traction potentially for someone like that? But um, in, in, in terms of uh, 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 to uh, which product are, are you referring to? I think it was Car Sage in the bottom left of one of your slides. I think they're a matchbook exchange offset potentially that came in and essentially just dropped out of the market pretty soon, right? Cascar. Cascar, yeah. It's my pronunciation, sorry. Ah, that went, yeah. uh, and and uh, and uh, and your exchange. your your question is why why do they they, they leave or or, or not, if necessarily, not necessarily why, but you said the need to be different. Is there room for someone to be that different? Obviously, that's a very different model. Yes, that there is a, um, there is the potentiality for uh, for some operators to to be different and to to create a differentiation in in uh, in the offer. But for example, in terms, if I should uh, suggest something in terms of uh, of product, I I see room in uh, in sport betting for sure, but really difficult because it's you have to manage by your own the product. You have to bear the risk in some way, even if the the provider could be a third party solution. And in uh, in the casinos, uh, why in the casinos? Because the there is uh, a big variety. Of, of products uh, in terms of slots and also table games, including uh, uh, live dealer, for example, and uh, the the um, the offer is so big that you you could tailor your your positioning, choosing making some choices and uh, and uh, um, let's say positioning your offer different from your competitor with uh, uh, some marketing specific activities and even you could include specific products that are not overlapped because are not product by third parties, but product original products, for example. Um, on, other, on other segments, uh, like poker, uh, for example, uh, the situation is, uh, is really tricky and, uh, and complicated, and, uh, and the betting exchange needs uh, a lot of, uh, of volume and it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, for example, the coexistence of different pa uh, platforms in the, in the same market if the liquidity is, uh, is closed, especially. Any last questions from the audience? Okay, if that's the case, then thank you very much, Mara. Brilliant presentation. Thank you to all, thank you.